God is faithful. God's word is our strength. God forgives. God is help. Jesus is king. God restores relationship. God is love. Jesus is compassionate. God is near. Jesus restores. Jesus is life. God's Spirit changes everything. This changes everything.
This game is called Will It Float? In this game, you will have to try to decide if you think the objects will float or sink. Make sure you're on your feet. If you think the object will float, you need to move your body to the left side of the room. If you think it will sink, you need to move your body to the right side of the room. Here we go, round one. Do you think an orange will float? Move to the left side of the room if you think it will float, or move to the right side of the room if you think it will sink. It floats, great job. Now let's see if we can answer a review question from some of the things that we've been learning about. How did Jesus come into Jerusalem at the triumphal entry? If you said he came riding on the colt of a donkey, you're right. Let's go to round two. Do you think a roll of duct tape will float? Move to the left side of the room if you think it will float, or move to the right side of the room if you think it will sink. It sinks. If that's what you guessed, you're right. Let's try another question. This one's a little tricky. What ruler of the Jews came to Jesus by night, seeking the way to eternal life? If you said Nicodemus, you're right. Here we go with round three. Do you think a can of chicken will float? Move to the left side of the room if you think it will float, or move to the right side of the room if you think it will sink. It sinks. If that's what you guessed, you're right. Here's another question for you. How many books are there in the Bible? Did you say 66? If you did, you're right. Let's try one more round. Round four. Do you think this cantaloupe melon will float? It's pretty heavy. Move to the left side of the room if you think it will float, or move to the right side of the room if you think it will sink. It floats. Wow, I have one more question for you. How did Jesus feed 5,000 men plus women and children? The answer is, he multiplied five loaves and two fish from a boy's lunch. Great job, everyone. Thanks for playing. Let's take a few moments to review our remember verse. Do you remember the code from last week? Can you remember what that code stands for? Take a moment and see if you can refresh your memory. Okay, let's go over it together. The memory verse is, The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Psalms 145 verse 8. Let's say that again. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Psalms 145 verse 8. Great job. Keep learning the remember verse. We've got a few more weeks left to learn it. the miracle that we saw Jesus perform you see he had over 5,000 people to feed and all he had was a couple of loaves and some fish and he did that and it was miraculous well today's story happens right after that you see after he feeds the 5,000 Jesus goes off into the wilderness to pray and the disciples well they get in a boat and we find in Matthew chapter 14 this story about Jesus walking on water that's right. You see, the disciples had gotten in the boat and they were taking the long trek across the Sea of Galilee. Now, back in those days, there were no motors on boats. Do you know what they had to do? They had to row. They had to row that boat to get it across to get it across the Sea of Galilee. And so the disciples, they rowed for hours all night long. And then all of a sudden, they see something that really scares them. Have you ever been scared? Ooh, they looked out across the water and they saw Jesus. Now, they were in the Sea of Galilee. Jesus wasn't standing on land. 
He was walking on the water. Some of the disciples thought it was a ghost. <gasps> so scary. But Peter, Peter recognizes that it's Jesus. And he calls out to Jesus and he said, Jesus, can I come out onto the water too? I mean, some of us are brave like that. We'd be like seeing Jesus and be like, oh, that looks cool. <laughs> Maybe I'll jump out of the boat too. And so Jesus says, yes, Peter, come out, come out. And so Peter jumps out on the boat and he's walking on water. And he's like, wow, this is really cool. Until the moment that Peter takes his eyes off Jesus. He takes his eyes off Jesus and all of a sudden Peter sees himself sinking into the water. And Peter gets really scared until Jesus reaches out his hand and he grabs onto Jesus and pulls him up and they both get back into the boat. And the Bible talks about how the disciples, they're worshiping Jesus and they're like, truly, you are the son of God. You are the Messiah. You see, at this point, they didn't know for sure. They didn't believe in their heart that this Jesus was who he said he was. But they knew in this moment that Jesus had come near to them. And sometimes me and you, we face hard times too. But just like Peter, when he reached out and asked Jesus to help him, Jesus will be near to us as well. You see, when we take a problem to God and we most of the time ask him to just take the problem away and he does that sometimes, but there are moments where God is asking us to rely on his strength, to know that God is near and that no matter what we're facing, he is there with us. And so remember this Bible story and remember that God is near to you. Are you facing hard times? Are you facing a difficult situation or maybe a decision that you have to make? Remember, God sometimes will take problems away and sometimes he won't. And when we see that our problem is still facing us, may we rely on Jesus to be near to us so that we can experience his strength and his power in our lives. Boys and girls, I want to leave you with a blessing today. May you know that God is near you as you go through hard times. May he give you patience, peace, and joy. And may your faith grow as you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus.